how do we make fine art fine for all? I grew up surrounded by artists that were creating fine art, paintings and sculptures. I grew up in artist colonies in the summer and living on college campuses in the winter while my father was an art professor. And the best part about growing up around artists is being able to visit their studios and watch that creative process. I got to see how each artist would capture all the things, the emotional and the, and the physical things that would help them, inspire them to come up with the pieces that they would create. All the tools and the paints, the canvases, and the perfect lighting. My father is also a sculptor, so I got to watch him in his studio. I got to see him sit at that drafting table and spend hours coming up with designs, making that it was perfect. And the debates, the debates about the social issues that it represented. I got to see him drag huge pieces of wood and marble. They were often larger than me through the door. And I'd see him shape those into the sculptures. And I'd see him cut steel and solder the bases with sparks going everywhere. And I'd always wonder how he never caught his studio, which was an old barn on fire. When he would finish the sculpture, I was really fortunate because then I got to dress up and go to all the gallery shows. And the galleries afford artists this clean, crisp appearance you know, making their artwork ready for presentation and for sale. And when his pieces ended up in museums and out in the public, in public places, that's when you got to see them. But what if we removed all of that? What if we removed the studio, removed fine art as a product, and we took away the gallery, we took away the museum, and we use the creation of fine art as a trigger for experiences with you. What if we made you the essential part of the fine art and without you, it wouldn't even, it wouldn't even come to life? Nine years ago, I started the Chalk Festival. And ever since, I have been working with the most renowned pavement artists around the world who are creating a paradigm shift in the way that you get to experience fine art. Instead of creating within a studio, they walk out on a stage. So just like me standing right here, except their stage won't be anything like this. They won't have the lighting. They won't have the air conditioning. Their stage are the roads that we drive down and they're the sidewalks that we walk on. And each artist is given a section of that road to perform. And they are performing next to hundreds of artists from all over the world of different skill levels. They may be performing next to a mother that has never created a pavement painting in her life, but she wants to spend the weekend with her two daughters. And they've signed up and they've decided to give it a try. They are creating masterpieces on the road, and their choice of medium is chalk. Now, I'm sure everybody in this room has played with chalk, either hijacking it from their teacher in the classroom or out on the playground. So you all know how delicate it is when you walk on it, you damage it. If it rains, it disappears. So what happens? What happens if it does rain? Well, one year we had rain, and when it came over the loudspeaker that rain was imminent in 15 minutes, it took every visitor and artist to cover four city blocks with plastic tarp. The artists had been creating their pieces for days, and they knew no matter what we did that the artwork is going to be changed. It rained for 24 hours, and when the sun came out, all the visitors came back out because everyone wanted to see what happened. And they got to help the artists lift these huge tarps off of the artwork. And because moisture got underneath the, tarp, underneath the tarps, some of the artwork became blurry. It blended some of the colors. This gives the audience the opportunity to see that artwork 
it doesn't always turn out the way you plan. You know that destruction is sometimes a part of the creative process. And you get to see how each artist is going to handle this situation, whether they're going to embrace the challenge or whether they're going to play a violin in the suffering role. Lori Escalara was the first feature artist, featured artist that we had um, in 2007. She was teaching a class of students when she gave our road surface at that time a D grade because her and the students were having a hard time drawing anything on it. It had rocks sticking up and has shells. And every time they would run the chalk along the road, the chalk would break in two. A local reporter was there, was watching as they were giving this class, and the headline in the paper the next day read, blood, toil, tears, and chalk. Lori was even quoted as saying, suffering is a part of the process and the public wants to know that we're miserable. <laughs> she told the students the next day they better use duct tape and wrap their fingers. So, you know, this is that messy part that you never got to saw, you never got to see. This is the part that I got to see watching my father create his artwork. It's the part that you get when the artist has an idea in their head and you get to watch that materialize in the physical world. It humanizes us. It humanizes the art. It humanizes you as the viewer. So why do they do it? Why would they do something that's just going to disappear. And a lot of people just say, ah, you know, they're weekend, weekend artists, and they just do it for fun. Well, it is fun. We have a lot of fun doing it, and all of the artists would say that they thoroughly enjoy it. But it's not just a weekend hobby for most of the artists. These are artists that are highly trained. They have been pavement painting for years. They travel the world, they are hired by corporations and agencies that are paying them handsomely because people, they want to connect people differently to their product. In 2012, we decided to incorporate group projects into the festival. Kurt Wenner was designing them. He discovered the pavement arts when he was in Italy. He went there to study classical drawing because he was a little bit disillusioned with the contemporary way that the, the art schools were going here in the USA. And while he was there, uh, he needed to figure out ways to feed himself and make money. And he saw these artists, these pavement artists, that have a 500-year history in Italy. You know, the artists there are called modernaries because they depict the image of the mother of Jesus. And they would travel town to town. This was their job as an artist. And they'd put out a hat and they'd ask for donations. And this is how they would make money. And when Kurt Wenner saw this, he decided to give it a try. And it became a lifelong career. He went on to invent the 3D illusion art form, pavement art form. It's an art form that makes the road appear to dip inward or rise above. This is a whole new art form in the past 30 years that has never been available to artists. This is giving fine artists the opportunity to travel, to create something with people instead of just being in their studio. In 2014, Julie Kirk actually led the group project team. And we had artists that traveled from everywhere. We had a lot of world record holder artists that showed up. It took 75 people to create it over 10 days. Many of the people that created it were volunteers. They were people that had never painted before. There were people that were homeless. And there were local artists. And instead of chalk in this piece, they used paint. And they had to use trash cans as paint buckets to mix their colors. And when finished, it stretched two football fields. And the public was invited to step inside the jaws of a megalodon shark, humanizing this experience that is so essential to 3D art. In fact, Kurt Wenner designed the mouth of the megalodon to scale. 
The evolution of the pavement arts continues today. It changes all the time. Kurt went on to design illusion rooms, inspiring artists to create walls and multiple angles. angles. <laughs> and they even have started to incorporate augmented reality, making it an even larger experience for the audience. And because the public values this innovation, these pavement artists are stretching and reaching every day. And because we love the social part, the social networking, these artists are creating an occasion for it. And of the hundreds of paintings that you will see in this museum that is now in motion, you are not gonna be able to take any home. You are not gonna dig up the asphalt. You're not gonna be able to buy anything. This is an art form that releases the ego. It teaches you the impermanence about life. And by teaching and shifting your perception of fine art, these artists are inspiring new people to join them every day. So when was the last time you got your hands dirty playing with chalk? And isn't it time that you give it a try? <laughs>